1.2 Fire Guard Patrols Buildings and its parts that have out-of-service fire protection system should be constantly checked. Every area of the building should be checked at least once every hour. The fire guards need to make regular inspections of the assigned area. They shall not be given any other responsibilities. The fire guard shall inspect for smoke and fire, and if found immediately contact the fire department. During the checks of the area, the fire guards should make sure there is no fire. This person should also ensure that egress routes, fire extinguishers, and fire alarm pole stations are available. If any problem is found, the fire guard must report it to building owner or the responsible person immediately. The designated person will then make plans to have the defects corrected. The inspections may differ from one location to another. However, the following general inspection rules apply for all locations. A. Inspect all exits, stairways, and hallways to determine condition and availability for use. All exits, stairways, hallways must be kept free of blockage. Blocking the exit may prevent occupants from leaving the building. Corrections must be made for proper way of exit with doors opening in direction of travel. An exit aisle is generally required to be at least 3 feet wide. Locks, bolts and chains shall not be installed on the exit doors while the building is in use. If locks are seen they must be removed immediately. The fire guard must then report such event to the building owner. The building owner must make sure that the chains or locks are removed. B. Check all the doors in the affected areas to see operation conditions and availability for use. Close attention must be paid to the stairways and areas where fire doors are installed. Exit into the stairway must be available from each floor of the building. Usually, a panic bar is installed on the door. The panic bars allow the occupants to quickly exit from the premises in case of an emergency. The fire guard must ensure that the fire doors exist, and are in good working order. C. Ensure that self-closing doors are not blocked and closed at all times, when not in use. The fire guard must ensure that all self-closing doors are not left open for any reason. Self-closing doors are made to slow down the spread of fire during emergency. These doors must be marked with a sign stating that they are self-closing doors. All self-closing doors in the building must be kept in good working order. They must be checked to make sure that they may not be opened and closed freely. If any defects are noticed the building owner must be advised. D. Ensure that exits are properly labeled, and hallways and stairways, are lit. Emergency lighting shall be provided for exits. Directional signs shall clearly show the path to exit. Exit signs posted above doors and emergency lighting must be lit. E. The entire location must be checked daily for ignition sources. Any likely ignition sources that are found must be immediately fixed. For example, arcing or exposed electrical wiring should be reported. F. Smoking is prohibitions. The fire guard must enforce the no smoking rules in the area. G. Constantly inspect premises for buildup of rubbish. Trash and garbage must not to be allowed to accumulate inside the building. Accumulated trash is a fire hazard. It may be easily ignited by a stray spark. All trash and garbage must be removed from the premises or building owner must be promptly notified. H. Know the location and correct use of fire extinguishers and fire alarm pole stations. All fire extinguishers and pole stations must be clearly visible. The fire guard must know how to use fire alarm pole station and the fire extinguishers. Fire alarm pole station should be activated in case of fire emergency only. I. Hot work operation may be prohibited. The fire guard must know that no hot work operation is allowed in areas of a building where the sprinkler system is impaired. At a construction site, no hot work operation is allowed if the sprinkler system or the standpipe system is impaired. Many of the fire safety concerns that exist for occupied buildings are also a concern for construction sites. The fire guard needs to be aware that conditions at a construction site are constantly changing, making periodic inspections very important. Pathways to an exit may change from day to day. 
the quantity and location of hazardous materials stored and use may also change. The fire guard must be alert to identify all changes impacting fire safety. 1.3. Inspection Record, Fire Rule 901-04, D, 11. A record shall be kept on the premises, maintained by the assigned person. The record of all fire safety related activities should be made available for inspection for fire department. It should be in writing or marked by an approved electronic device. The record must be maintained for at least 48 hours after the fire watch has finished. The daily written record must be signed by the fire guard. The following items should be logged. A. The number of inspections completed. B. Defects found. C. Violations that have been found, and D. The date, name, certificate of fitness number and signature of the fire guard who conducted the inspections. An example of the inspection record is shown on the next page. See the comments section for diagram. 1.4 Fire Department Notification and Emergency Procedures 1.4.1 Fire Department Notification for Impairment The department shall be notified that a standpipe system, sprinkler system, or fire alarm system is out of service, whether by reason of a planned removal from service or an unplanned out-of-service condition. 1. Standpipe Systems Notification shall be made to the department whenever a standpipe system is or will be out of service for any period of time. 2. Sprinkler systems and fire alarm systems. Notification that a sprinkler system or fire alarm system, or any part thereof, is or will be out of service shall be made to the department under the following circumstances. The sprinkler system or fire alarm system is or will be out of service on more than one floor of a building, or with respect to a sprinkler system, the work or repairs cannot be completed, and the system restored to service, within eight hours of the time the system was placed or went out of service, or with respect to a fire alarm system, the work or repairs will require the fire alarm system to be out of service for more than eight hours in any 24-hour period, or one or more other fire protection systems in the area in which a fire protection system is out of service are or will also be out of service at the same time. The general information, non-emergency, Numbers that should be used for notifications are Manhattan 212-570-4300 Brooklyn 718-965-8300 Queens 718-476-6200 Bronx 718-430-0200 Staten Island 718-494-4296 the impairment coordinator should be able to give the following information. The owner or impairment coordinator's name and contact information. The building address. The type of fire protection system that is out of service. Whether the out of service is planned or unplanned. If a planned removal from service, the date and time the fire protection system will be placed out of service, and the estimated duration the system will be out of service. If an unplanned out-of-service condition, the estimated duration the system will be out of service. The floors or areas in which the fire protection system is out of service. If the other fire protection systems are in good working order. The name and certificate number of the certificate of fitness holder responsible for supervision of the fire protection system that is out of service. 1.4.2 Emergency Notification and Procedures Fire guards must have a method of connecting to emergency services. Fire guards can use cell phones to make notifications. They should ensure that there is enough battery power to cover their shift. Notifying by phone is the most direct and effective way to notify the fire department. If a fire guard becomes aware of a fire, he slash she must immediately telephone 911 and report the emergency. There should be no delays in making such notification. The fire department may also be notified using a street fire alarm pole station. The fire guard should also immediately notify the impairment coordinator or FSD or CSFSM or other on-site responsible personnel of the emergency, but only after telephoning 911. 
the responsible person will give directions to the fire guard. The fire guard must follow those instructions. For example, the FSD may instruct the fire guard on the safest evacuation route from the building. The fire guard should also sound the fire alarm pole station, where available, to alert the occupants. When notifying 911 of a fire or other emergency, the call taker will need to obtain certain information about the emergency. Obviously the nature of the emergency and address are the most critical pieces of information. The operator may also ask what the nearest cross street is, and if anyone is in need of medical attention and if so, what are their symptoms. Additionally, if you are responsible for a very large construction site or large building, it is likely that there will be more than one means of entry. Providing information about which entrance would provide the most direct access to the emergency area would be helpful in getting the emergency response personnel to the area of the emergency as quickly as possible. If certain entrances are obstructed and are not easily accessible by emergency responders, this information should be communicated to the 911 operator. The more information you have available to communicate to the 911 operator, the more efficient they can get the right kind of help to you quickly. When you call 911, in addition to the information mentioned above, you should be prepared to answer other 911 operator questions, which may include the phone number you are calling from, the nature of the emergency, details about the emergency, such as a physical description of a person who may have committed a crime, a description of any fire that may be burning, or a description of injuries or symptoms being experienced by a person having a medical emergency. Be prepared to follow any instructions the operator gives you. Many 911 operators can tell you exactly what to do to help in an emergency until help arrives. Finally, do not hang up until the operator instructs you to. In case of a fire emergency, occupants may have to be evacuated. Occupants on the fire floor and the floor above have the most threat and must be evacuated first. If the fire guard is responsible for helping in the evacuation, they should be calm and in control of the situation. Fire guards should speak in a clear manner when helping with the evacuation. Their instructions and actions play an important role in controlling panic in an emergency. Occupants should be told to be calm and move quickly to the closest exit. The fire guard should tell the occupants to avoid the elevators and direct them to use stairwells to exit. After the FDNY arrives, the fire guard should be sure to meet the emergency responders to provide them with information regarding the nature of the emergency, its location in the building or on the construction site and to provide the information that the emergency responders request.